Security and Arena this morning. We have Wolf Security. Thank you so much, uh, Alan and Darius from Wolf Security, for joining us today and spending our time here and bringing the dogs out for the people. Guys, I'm going to introduce you to Darius now. Um, he'll be telling you all about the dogs and the show, and then I'll continue about it. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, good morning everybody. My name is Dari from Wall Security. Uh, today we're going to do a bit of a demonstration. We have two dogs with us today. Um, one dog is busy with training at the moment with uh, explosives. So we'll do a demonstration how we do that. Um, the, let me tell you a bit more about Wall Security. Wall Security is a local company in the South Coast. We've been here longer than about 10 years and longer. Uh, we are a community-based company. We promote community outreach programs, uh, CPFs, and all the beach cleans. You have seen us. If you've been to Margate Beach, you'll see our guards walking around there. We are here for the community. Um, today, we're going to do an demonstration just to show you what we can do for our clients and for the community. Um, okay. We are structured in the south coast from Port Shepson to the South Room. We have our guarding our uh, farmers divisions up in Paddock and Azocha. We divide it into three different aspects. We have an arm response company that's arm response with our tactical backup team. We have a canine unit uh, that specializes in high risk situations where it comes to arm robberies or suspects or uh, even house uh, invasions. Then we have a farm watch team that's divided into the two areas that covers all the farms, patrols and all those things that go with that. Now with Wall Security, Persepna having our own canine unit, we decided to go one step further. We actually established as a Sieta and Sierra training center. It's internationally recognized. The reason why we've done it is we want to uphold standards. It's one thing about an animal is we have to keep carrying at it and upholding the standards of the animal. So with our training center, this is what we'll demonstrate now, what the process of all the working dogs work and how we actually do the training regarding how, uh, regarding how we do the uh, narcotics and explosive detection. So the first dog, we have some Peewee and Duke. Um, he is a patrol dog and we're trying to train him as a dual purpose dog, meaning that he'll be a patrol dog, meaning searching for suspects and patrolling the area and then also finding a substance. Now, he's been trained as explosive dog because we're finding more and more that uh, criminals in the area are using uh, firearms and that is why we've trained a dog. So when we actually approach a vehicle, uh, or suspect that God will indicate to us that there is a firearm present uh, by indicating to us by sitting down. Now, just how the guy is still under training a dog. There's quite a bit of process of training a dog because there's two ways of indication. There's a physical indication where it actually actually touches the object or drags the object to indicate that. We promote that under narcotics because some of the guys hide things under the clothing or under seats, so we promote them to actually grab and try to get it. When explosive, you don't want the dog to drag around a bag of explosives. So it is two ways of doing now. With explosives, they need to indicate and sit for us to show us that there is a substance detected. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do just a basic one on the drums. The blue one will indicate as a positive. Now we're going to use a firearm and we we'll place on top of the drum. The dog will then search the three areas and indicate to us where it is. Now when we're done there, we'll actually show a vehicle where a suspect is then pulled over, where he hides a firearm, the dog will then search the vehicle and indicate to us where the firearm is. Now, that, what the dog is dual purpose. Now we'll do a situation where a suspect is apprehended, you'll see the dog will be obedient, will be try, uh, uh, demonstrated, where the dog will sit, the handler will move forward, he will then search the uh, suspect, the suspect will then in turn try to attack him and the dog will then react. Now, that we try to keep everything close in the middle. Um, these are unfortunately all working dogs. So that's why we put this little barrier on. We try to promote people to stay behind the barrier. We have put stuff in place to make sure if a dog does not want to bite the actual suspect, that we have control over it. So don't fear about that. So after we've done the attack, what uh, we'll do is we'll do a demonstration where the suspect tries to flee and then the dog will bite. Now, that is the one dog we have in training, that's our dual purpose. After that, we'll have David and his dog. Uh, that dog is also under training, but at the moment now, we are just honing on the actual patrol of the dog. The biggest thing about our, our job we're doing is actual suspects. So, the dog will demonstrate how our attack will perform and how the arrest will perform after that. 
we always see when a dog handlers are working, they work in pairs. Uh, because unfortunately, when you bite someone and you release the dog and move away, you're giving up an opportunity for a suspect to move away. That's where you'll see a second person will be just behind the canine guy, the handler, and move forward. And as soon as the arrest has happened, the guy will take the dog off. You'll turn to the left and move away where our second person will affect the arrest. Okay, so this is just a demonstration how the dogs operate. Like I said, we are a training center. We do the training that we do the DH levels from one to five as the dog handling courses is internationally recognized. So we have our own training center where other companies actually come to us and do training. We don't actually Pacific do drug training. So don't get excited and say we send all your dogs. We don't specialize in dog training. The reason for that is the public liability regarding that. With having a trained dog, you yourself as a handler needs to be trained as well. Because it's literally like giving you a firearm. You need to be trained how to use that dog because that thing can potentially kill or harm someone. So today we'll show you a demonstration of how the dogs work. Um, so people will come out, we'll show you how it works. We'll get the suspect, David. Uh, David will play the suspect today. What you'll do is you'll hide the firearm onto a location um, and then the dog will go and look for it and indicate. Okay, you'll see when the guys are actually doing the trip, they have a specific route how they do it. They will begin by a point and work anti-clockwise around the vehicle. It all depends on wind direction. This is where the training in the dog lockers is very important because you have to take everything into consideration. Wind direction, temperature, what you're searching, where you're searching it. Because all those factors play and take place to see if it actually detects it. Because it could be a minute signature that's hidden inside the vehicle that he can't pick up. So if you have to follow a sequence to make sure he has a great success out of finding the firearm. Sorry, the dogs we're using here are Malamois. We have a range of different dogs. Um, we have uh, German Shepherds, we have Malamois and everything like that. So these ones we use, these are perfectly used for this type of situation where it is for a patrol dog. Um, detection are do very well in detection, but there is that dogs that are specialized in those fields uh, for airports and harbors. Um, there's a lot, funny, there's actually a dog that gets used at the harbor uh, looking for starways, and it's a Jack Russell. And it's actually quite funny, this thing running around looking for stowaways and the ships in it. So that's why the dogs are used for dual purpose and you'll see the dog has a very good nose to it and will actually detect and then stop and indicate. Look at that. 
and there's his reward. Okay, it's like it's a game for him. That's why he's having so much fun doing it. So what we're going to demonstrate now is we're going to move, David, if you don't mind moving those drums out the way there. What we're going to demonstrate now is actually a obedience, where the, dog, the, the handler will tell the dog to sit and stay while he's trying to search a suspect that he's apprehended. Now you'll see now when the guys use a uh, dog, there's a command that needs to be given, okay? Firstly, when you use a dog, you need to inform the person that you're going to use your dog. Okay, it's very important that you actually notify the person. Say he's indicated that you are willing to use your your your, your dog to apprehend him. So when you see when he's actually going to attack, there's a command which should be given for that. We're going to go excited. He gets there's a command that he gives to, to actually do a bite. But there's a whole process. Unfortunately, the whole process needs to be followed before a bite can take place. So you'll see now Alan is there wearing a full bite suit because we're trying the dog to bite anywhere. Anyway, leg, his arm, his back, his stomach, and anywhere he can get grab, uh, sink his teeth into. Because unfortunately, the suspect is not going to run out with his arm out waiting for us to bite him. So what we've done is we invested into a bite suit because the dog will look at any opportunity where to bite. And it's perfect because as soon as he has a bite, the suspect will fall down and the handler will be there quickly rem to remove the dog. Because we do not dare to actually harm the suspect, we dare to apprehend the suspect. So as little force is needed, what we're trying to uh, accomplish. of the dog he told him to stay and then he's trying to search a suspect trying to shake the dog off and run away. So he's not trying to bite and hold on, regardless how hard. And what we do, we find there's a lot of times these actual suspects have learned the dog's commands. So we actually, you send the dog out to go bite the dog, the, 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 the suspect will turn around and say, yield or stop or fui. The dog will react to it. So now we've done is we train the dog not to react to it. So when he goes in for a bite, he will not, if a dog, the, the guy says lost, he won't. The dog is trained not to lose till he actually gets or literally choked out, yeah. where he actually gets picked up, where he puts tension behind the jaw and releases. Because the thing is, we don't want the guy to be Stay. tell the dog to stop and then he runs Stay. away. Stay. actually go towards the handler, uh, showing a sign of aggression. Uh, the guy will inform him to stop. Um, the three commands will be given. The, the suspect will still progress, and as soon as the guy does progress further, where the handler feels unsafe at necessary cost, then you will send the dog for a bite.
Okay, just give us five minutes. We're just gonna change dogs and get give a chance to cool down on this heat. And the next dog will come up will be David's dog, and we'll do a demonstration of a patrol dog there.